guys, Saprin here from FEFO, and in today's video I will show you something really cool, something I've been putting off for too long, and I really wanted to show you how to go uh, and do nonlinear studies in Codaster. So this is what we'll be doing. I will be taking the, the plates with the whole model that I've been building in my previous video tutorial, um, and, and then I will show you how to turn this model into a nonlinear model. And because nonlinear uh, involve uh, to know something about the various types of nonlinearity and how nonlinearity works, I've been also uh, I've also decided to review uh, some of the training content that is available on the Codaster website. So I will explain to you uh, some of the nonlinear concepts. Uh, and then I will show you how to apply that into this practical example. So I, this tutorial will be really cool, really helpful, I hope. And uh, if uh, you like it, if you, this is useful, please give it a like, please subscribe to my channel. This is always helpful. And this is uh, allowing me to make more of those videos. So let's start right now with uh, this uh, wonderful tutorial. So let's start by going on the Codaster website and into the training section. And let's go into the advanced training here. And the first presentation you find here, nonlinear analysis basis, is was is basically what tells you how to perform a nonlinear analysis with Codaster uh, and Salome Mecca. Now, uh, of course, this content, uh, if you have no further knowledge of Codaster, Salome, and nonlinear uh, simulation. This will look, um, you know, incomprehensible. So the, the first time I, I had a look at this material, I was like, what is that? Uh, but, you know, after some years of experience, I find out that this is actually a pretty clear presentation how this works. So I decided to go over this presentation with you uh, quickly. I will not try to make it too long, but this this should be uh, helpful. So. Let's go over this presentation and let's start uh, talking about some of the nonlinear concepts that you need to have. So, first of all, um, the nonlinear stuff are complicated. So, you know, there's there's a lot of knowledge to have to be able to, to run uh, this kind of nonlinear problems. So uh, if you're a beginner in FEA, you, you barely run your first uh, elastic study and you, you're still not grasping very well how Codaster works, um, this video will probably go over your head. Uh, but I'll tr I really try to make it easy to understand. So, uh, and, and of course, if you have questions, just you can always tell me in the comments. I'll try to make it easy for you to understand. Uh, but you know, nonlinear analysis inherently is a topic for professionals and it's very difficult uh, to be honest. So let's start with what is a nonlinear problem in mechanics. Now uh, there are three types of nonlinearities. So that's the first thing to understand is uh, first time, first type of linearity comes from uh, large displacement, large rotation, large strains. Uh, so basically when you have a, a model which is supposed to deform very largely, not necessarily becoming plastic, but uh, deforming. Uh, so you can think about a fishing rod, for example, which really deforms a lot, but you know it, it comes back to the initial shape, so it's not plastic deformation. Uh, this kind of large displacement is uh, nonlinear, so you have to consider it as nonlinear. Second type is material nonlinearity. So if, if you have nonlinear response, um, history dis dependent response, so we'll talk about that, or uh, you want to use a nonlinear material or study plasticity. This is a, a second type of nonlinearity. Third type is contact and friction, and uh, honestly, this is the most complex type of uh, nonlinearity because there are a lot of different types of contacts, and it's always uh, very tricky to make to make such nonlinear analysis converge. So, those are the three types. Today, in the demonstration, I will show you basically a second type, the material nonlinearity, and uh, we'll talk about maybe the other two in uh, other videos. 
Now, um, the three nonlinearity should be coupled. So you can have those three together or you can have one of them. But more you have nonlinearities into your model and more it will be difficult to solve, of course. Now, the third point is numerical simulation requires expert analysis. And, you know, it, it sounds stupid to say that, but it's really, really true. Um, it really requires a lot of knowledge and understanding of how the, how, um, how the algorithm works and how the convergence works and, and everything. So, you know, again, if uh, this goes over your head, don't worry, um, you can, you, you will understand, uh, you know, after coming back to uh, the, the basic concepts or by asking questions, of course. Okay, so, um, so the first type of, of nonlinearity, material nonlinearity, um, is basically what you have uh, if, let's say, you take a model like this, so, uh, you know, a simple uh, sample, um, material sample, you apply some loads and uh, you, you take it up to a point where it really becomes plastic and you the deformation doesn't come back to the elastic uh, state and and basically at the end it can break right so um, if you want to study the whole cycle including elasticity and plasticity then you have to to use nonlinear uh, material models and there are a lot of nonlinear material models available um, which are really every each of them is dependent on, on the type of simulation you do the type of material a lot of stuff so um, generally we use the most simple one uh, in this tutorial but you know you should know there are a lot of types and I think in Codasta there are more than 100 types of uh, nonlinear material so this is definitely uh, a huge topic and uh, this is an expert one as well so um, now uh, you can have you can have a nonlinear material which is uh, not history dependent, and you can have a material which is history dependent. So what the what that means is that when it's not history dependent, is that you have basically one curve, and uh, and you're basically going through a load cycle only. Um, you are not loading unloading and uh, reloading like that your your model so you just look at this curve the initial displacement here is always um, is always at zero right the the uc is equal to ua so the displacement of the point a is equal to the displacement of the point c but if you have history dependence in your model it means that first time you load up your model up to uh, b you go into plasticity, you unload your model, and then you see that the, the displacement here doesn't come back to zero. So you have a residual uh, displacement that have to be taken in account the next time you will reload your model. So the loading will start from C the next time. So this is history dependency. Um, so, you know, different type of nonlinear material will consider or not this type of history uh, dependency in your uh, loading. Um, Nonlinear kinematics, so this means large displacements or large rotations, are basically, um, well, you can look at, at the response here, right? The, the displacement is, is huge um, and it can it change in function of the force. For this system, for example, we have a truss, a beam with a uh, spring here. So the, the beam in itself doesn't deform, doesn't change its shape. It doesn't go plastic, but the movement here itself is very, very large. So this is um, linear. Uh, this is a nonlinearity. Now, nonlinear contact and friction, well, when you have several parts or several body, you want to consider the contact between them. And basically this contact here, um, if it has some friction, um, well, you need to consider this. So it's very difficult nonlinear problem as it's written here. And um, generally it's, it's very difficult to make it converge. 
and in Codaster you have different type of contact that you can use with different type of uh, calculation or friction. Some of them consider friction, some of them do not consider. Uh, it's it's for the moment it's too complicated, so I will not enter in, in those details. Now um, here are a few theoretical elements that we need to talk when we talk about uh, nonlinear uh, stuff because it's important to understand uh, also how that works. Um, first of all, the, the measure of stress which is taken uh, is, um, is a bit different than uh, what, um, what ha has been considered before um, in, um, in uh, um, let's say, when we were in elastic simulation. Because in elastic simulation, um, you know, the stress deforms, but uh, it doesn't go plastic. So in um, in a nonlinear simulation, you you have to consider that at some point your model will change its shape uh, plastically. So the the for example the section of the cylinder will decrease, and because the section decrease, uh, you have to calculate the way you calculate the stresses needs to consider the fact that this this change in section shape is also going to affect the value. And um, so that's why we use Cauchy true stress to calculate uh, stresses uh, rather than, um, you know, the type of elastic stresses that we have been using before. Uh, so this allows to measure on the deformed configuration. Now, um, for the strain, um, it depends if you consider small strain or not. So for small strain, we uh, we take this equation here, in uh, so it's um, it's just basically an approximation, and uh, this this will uh, give out the small strains. Um, okay, now uh, maybe I might go over some of those slides because they're probably not that uh, interesting. Okay, so that that's um, yeah. Some some of them, you know, is just not not that much interesting. So yeah. Um, so the only thing you need to understand too is that the low, the low that was linear before between the stress and the strain is now nonlinear. So that's why it's called nonlinear simulation. So before we had sigma equal to the Young's modulus multiplied by uh, the strain um, and then we, we could basically do a matrix uh, multiplication and we, we were able to, to change from strain to stress. Well, it's not uh, any more possible in a nonlinear simulation because this equation is not linear anymore um, because you have a manual a material nonlinearity or kind of nonlinearity. So, you have basically to find a way to solve this equation uh, using um, you know, numerical techniques of integration. So let me go over some of that. I'm just trying to detail only what is uh, what is important. Yeah, well, let's talk about the general algorithm for nonlinear problem. So uh, here's the major difference is that um, we use an incremental algorithm to solve nonlinear. So it's not uh, it's not anymore just one matrix inversion will give you the results uh, and everything will be solved in one step. Now we have to go through an incrementation. So there there is always an increment of uh, of uh, time, but in this case, it's not really time, like it's written here. It's a quasi-static problem, so it's just a, a division of your problem into increments, which uh, sometimes are called t or instant or time, but this is not really time. Um, and uh, the the thing is that we are doing this because we need to 
uh, to calculate the loads and the boundary condition applied to the model uh, incrementally. So we need to, to cut the loads into smaller loads that will be applied one after the other. So, and as you can see, when you apply different kind of forces to your model, volumic, surface echo displacement, uh, they, they are not constant anymore. So maybe one is constant, but the other will change, the other will change. So during the simulation, you have, you, you have basically to account for the fact that your boundary conditions are not constant anymore and their value can change according to uh, this T factor. Um, so we, we call that time, but like I told, it's not really time. Um, it's just a basic division of uh, your, your boundary condition. And, um, and what happens is that basically what we're doing is that we are, uh, to solve this kind of nonlinear quasi-static problem, we need to reduce the nonlinear problem into a linear problem. Well, into a series of linear problems. So if this is the, the, the force applied and the displacement you get, so you see that the curve is like that, it's not a linear anymore. So what we can do is that we can cut this into one, two, and we, we can approximate this curve by um, curve which are close enough to your uh, loading. And this, this will be an approximation of linearity on those, um, on those steps. So that's why we need to cut the, the load. And it's very important in nonlinear uh, simulation like that to cut the load into enough smaller loads. If you see that you, you just cut in two here, um, you know, it will not be as linear as it should be. Maybe it go from here to here, so it will not follow the curve. So uh, more you want to be accurate, the more you will need uh, to, to cut your load into smaller loads. So that's the thing. Um, so because we need to do this kind of discretization of the loading, uh, we will have to introduce um, time steps and uh, associate that with uh, the loading and with the, the simulation. So we'll have to uh, apply the load by increments. And okay, so this is just to tell you a bit how the algorithm is solved. So, yeah, if you use the Teller series expansion on the, the solution Fx, you can, you can write it like this. And, and then if you take this term Xn and you express it in function of the previous term, you see that you can calculate the next term of the series in function of the previous terms. So this is basically some kind of way to, um, to approximate the, 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 the next iteration of the solution. And the, the convergence of this um, of this is what is important because nonlinear quasi-static can diverge if your uh, algorithm is uh, is not um, you know if your iteration is not small enough or you, you can have errors into your approximation. And we use the no, uh, the Newton's method to solve this equation f x equals zero. So. To solve this, we use the Newton's method. So I'll talk briefly about the U Newton's method because this is a key concept in nonlinear uh, quasi-static simulation. Uh, Newton's method, you have to understand what it does. Um, and basically, so we are, okay, so we have internal forces, external forces, yeah, right. We have, so those are the equations at each step. Yeah, this is not that much interesting. Uh, let me show you the, the, the graphical stuff, the curve. This is easy to understand. Um, yeah, okay, so let me show you this. this. This will make you understand what I'm talking about. This is the force, this is the displacement here, and this is how it, it changed non-linearly, um, you know, as per your, your simulation definition. Now, the what the Newton method does is that you first divide this into a first increment f1, so a subload f1 and the second load f2, and then you try to solve 
on each of those. So the, the first thing you do is you say, okay, this is linear on this uh, up to F1. I have a linear, so you'll take a curve which goes close to this one, but is linear. And as you can see, it, it uh, reaches here. So instead of reaching this point here, which is the true displacement solution that you are expected to get, because it's an approximation and this curve is, uh, is linear, you get this solution instead. So there is still a gap between those two. And uh, you, you need to iterate at each step um, in order to get closer to the real solution. So the, this is what the Newton method does. Uh, you first step, you get that value and then you iterate. So you calculate the difference and basically you update the displacement, you measure um, this and and then you go through some iteration. So here, first you measure that, second um, So you solve the system, you update the displacement, you evaluate the convergence. Uh, yeah, so you do all that. And then you update this again. So you do a second iteration and you see this curve here, the second time it goes closer to the real solution. So, and you do that and for, you choose a certain number of iterations until it really reaches what you expect to get here. Um, and this is the true Newton method because the, the um, let's say, the slope of this uh, curve is recalculated. So the matrix of the material data is recalculated at every step. But the quasi-Newton method, what it's doing is that it's taking the same uh, slope at this point here and um, so it doesn't have to recalculate every time the, the slope. Um, and instead it has more iterations, but because you don't recalculate the, the, the Young's modulus here, the elastic Young's modulus, you, you get faster to uh, the, the real solution. Okay, so yeah, so that's the difference. Slope is current matrix or slope is elastic matrix. Okay, you, you don't, if you don't really understand what this means, don't worry about this. You can come back to this later. Um, it's just to tell you a bit about uh, how the convergence work. And we'll see after that in Codaster, you have some ways to control this. So you can choose which method you want to use, true Newton or quasi static. And some of them will, will be faster than others, but will need more iterations. So why quasi-static methods? So that's I, that's I was saying, um, compute exact matrix every iteration, matrix must be factorized, so it's very expensive, um, but each iteration is faster. So okay, okay, now let's see all the thing update this plan, improve by line search. Okay, so you have all the methods you can add after that, like the line search method that will uh, help you to, to get even better convergence. Um, for example, if you do something like nonlinear buckling, this kind of method will be useful. Um, otherwise, you know, this is pretty advanced, you, you won't need it. Um, And th this is also to follow up what uh, I've shown to you. You know, if if you look at the the this force, right? It it's clearly just you know uh, going up to a certain value and just uh, staying up there, right? But if you go into um, a nonlinear simulation where you have unloading, loading, unloading, or you know your your force is uh, kind of decreasing after a certain time, like you have in buckling then that's when you will need um, line search or uh, uh, other kind of methods to, to solve this. So this is a bit too advanced. I'm not detailing that too much. Now, uh, evaluating the convergence. So this is also pretty important. There is an error 
in the nonlinear quasi-static analysis. So um, you have to define what is your reasonable error ratio that you're comfortable with. And generally by default, it's uh, 10 uh, power minus six. So that's, that's what is generally taken. So you can increase that, but uh, it's really not recommended because you will uh, this will lead to bigger and bigger errors and, and generally the convergence will work better but you will get uh, uh, not you won't get good results so that's that's not uh, recommended okay now we go to the next part which is uh, the most interesting for you is how to use nonlinear encodaster and that's um, I'm gonna comment those slides first and then we'll go into the, the example so, um, so the first thing you need to, to know if you use material nonlinearity is that you will need to provide a, a isotropic hardening and plasticity curve. So you can do this like that. You can uh, either take it from a file and then provide this as a traction uh, property in the defi material um, function. Um, so we'll see how to do that a bit later. Um, and then, yeah, the, so your material is then assigned to your model uh, in um, AFE material. So this is uh, the same then linear. And then what you need to do is that the, the, the solver used, which was um, linear, which was linear before, has to be changed to stat nonlinear. So this is the simulation used for nonlinear uh, quasi-static stuff. So and uh, and to consider this relation of nonlinear material, you have to define the relation you use here. So the the most sim the simplest uh, relation is this Vemis iso track. That's what I'm going to use. But as I was telling you, there are hundreds of uh, Nonlinear material uh, definitions. So, really, uh, you have to know what uh, you're doing. And this deformation, petit, which means a small in French, uh, it means that we are in small strain hypothesis. So, if you are considering large strain, you'll have to change this to uh, another parameter. Now, uh, the second thing you need to do is you need to parameterize your loading. So like I was saying, you need to cut your load into uh, increments. So uh, you have two ways to do it. You can either take a static load, which is already defined by this function, afe car maker, so like we did for the linear stuff. Uh, and then you create um, a time function. So uh, defi with this function, defi function. Uh, you create a time function and in the result you assign this time function to your load. So that's the first way to do it. So I'm, I'm going to show you how to do this. And the second way to do it is to to use uh, a new type of load which is inherently uh, nonlinear. So it's you see that the previous load was Afe Karmica and this one is Afe Karmica F. So there, there is an F here that indicates that now we are using a, a function of time. Uh, and in this case, you will still need to define your time function here. But your time function will contain the value of the load. So it goes from, you see, 0, 0 to 2, 200, which is the final value of this. Whereas in the previous example, um, it was the time function was zero zero to two two, and then the pressure here was hundred. So basically, the value of pressure is multiplied to the result of this time function. So that that's two different ways. You can do one or the other. Um, now the definition of the um, time increment come with this defi list real. So it's a definition of the, 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 the time intervals of that, that will be considered for this simulation. So this is uh, pretty important. You, know, you have several ways to define it. You can define like it's defined here. Uh, debut, which means start. So it starts at zero 
and then you have some intervals of uh, jusqu'à 1, it means until 1, so it goes until 1, and nombre 4, which means number 4, so you have 4 steps in, in here. And then jusqu'à 2, until 2, number 3, 1, 2, 3, so you have 3 iteration here, so you have 4 and 3, and, and your, your final um, your final time, um, let's say, time increment is constructed like this. So you can increase the number of increments or uh, decrease them manually as you want. And we'll see at the end that there are automatic ways also to, to uh, refine automatically and divide by two if uh, this is considered too large. So this will be uh, at the end of this video. I'll show you how to do this. Um, now, loading and time definition must be consistent, so that, that's also what's important here. Um, you have two types of, uh, two types of uh, way to define time. You have the loading and you have this, uh, this time param parameterization, which is assigned in the, in the stat non line function. So both have to end up at the same uh, time. So you cannot have this one add at 2 and the previous one you assign to the loading uh, end at 4, for example, that will give you an error. So but we'll, we'll see that in the example. Um, okay, and when you define this, okay, so, and then that, that those are the advanced controls. So um, I'm talking briefly about this. Basically, you can also associate um, a list, you know, um, you can do a def list and def list int, like, um, so you can give this list that you created previously, so it's the same interval, but you give it to another object, def list inst, and this object has a check, uh, événement, erreur, action, découpe. So this, me this means that in case you get an error because your uh, steps are too large, for example, it will automatically cut your um, your steps in two. So this is what it means. Decoup means uh, cut cutting. So it will it will cut in case of error. If you get an error, it will cut your uh, your increment. That that's pretty uh, interesting to have this kind of automatic cutting. Uh, definitely need to know about this because this this is very uh, important, especially um, when it doesn't converge. And yeah, this is um, and then you have automatic step adaptation as well. So this is the way to do it. As for example, we define automatically four uh, number four steps in in all three steps. And the the size of this is a, is defined by us manually, right? But you can also you you don't really know if this is the if this size is good enough or not. So you can have the algorithm to automatically kind of change and adapt the number of steps. So you could just define one step, and then let the algorithm just cut for you number of steps. So. Um, yeah, so it's cool to have this. So I, I've never tried it, but you know, um, I should. Then generally, this is also pretty useful to have this because we we don't really know the number of steps that will be needed to solve a problem beforehand. So if the the, the solver can automatically cut and uh, provide some insights on that, then that that's pretty good. And finally, you have some um, control on the Newton uh, method. So quasi-Newton method, you can uh, increase the number of iteration at each step by using this common, react iter2 or 3. Uh, you can, if you want to recalculate the elastic matrix every time, you can pass it the matrix elastic like this. And uh, those are the default values. So by default, you see that you have uh, zero iteration so you know the if you need some iterations uh, make sure that you define that and you can change the convergence criteria as well so um by putting that here you can 
So you see by default it's one uh, the power minus six. But again, it's you know make sure changing the criterion convergence may produce wrong result, and you know it's written in very big because it, it's generally very true. So if you see your simulation is not converging, do not uh, kind of try to decrease or increase the, the the convergence criteria just to make it converge. That's the wrong way to do things. Uh, rather, change the number of iterations or uh, you know change the, the mesh size or something like this. Uh, okay, and um, you have a maximum number of Newton's iteration as well, you can define. Yeah, and I think that's basically it for this presentation. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're uh, going to go on um, the practical part of today's uh, video, which is um, how do I take my, uh, my simulation, my elastic simulation, and make it nonlinear. So I hope this will be a bit more interesting than this nonlinear stuff. In, in the presentation format, but definitely after you follow the tutorial and everything, you should come back to this part and, and look at that in, in much more details. It will make more sense after. Okay, so I just opened Salome, so I'm using Salome Maker two, um, 2019. Uh, I believe there's not so much difference with the, with the latest version uh, published on the website. Um, I'm using the Linux uh, Ubuntu 18.04 version. Um, now, if you are on Windows and you have downloaded the Salome Maker on Windows, this should all work for you as well. So, so let, let's start, right? So, the first thing I'm going to do is to import and load the model I've, I've created in my previous video tutorial. So, you should ha have it, or I'll put again the link to, to it in the description of the video or on the blog. Uh, so I let's open the mesh module so I'm into it and let's import my uh, previous mat file which was um, I'm going to start with this one let's have a look so that's that's my model um, my groups everything was already defined on it so I do not have to set that up again uh, again, if you if you want to know how that works, how I did this model, you can come back and have a look at my previous video. Um, I'm gonna I'm not gonna go over the linear case anymore because it's uh, already show you how to do this. So now the second thing is how do I import my com file? Well, you see you you can right click on this current stage and you have add stage from file. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna import the com file that I have exported from my previous study and okay they are data with undefined file names okay this is normal uh, it's because by default when you import the com file like that the the files which are associated are not linked automatically so you see it's written undefined 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 and you have to set that up so the first is the reader mesh, so I have to double click on that and select my mesh file that I've just imported. So if I click here, now you see my mesh is appearing, so that's good. Um, now I still have two files, yeah, two files which are undefined, so those are the set output result files. So if you remember in previous video, I have set up a text file result and I have a med file result. So I won't need the text file result for this study, so I will just delete this one. And for this one, I am gonna create again. So double click, go over. So I'm, go I'm gonna create a new folder. And let's change the name, let's call that nonlinear plate 2. Save it. Make sure your results are associated. Click on OK. And now you should be ready to, um, to do this linear static simulation. So just to be sure it works, go in the history view and let's run that quickly. Okay, I need to save, of course. Always forgot about this. Okay.
Okay, so I've saved. Let's run that. Okay, I'm, I'm getting green, of course. Uh, so that that's good. Everything's good. So just quickly um, to to for those who don't know this model, it's a really really simple model. There's a plate. There's a hole here. Uh, there's a uh, edge here and edge here and uh, another edge here. So I'm applying a load to this edge here in th in this direction, in the y direction. I'm applying pressure to to um, extend that load. And on those two boundary conditions, basically they are symmetry conditions. So I, you know, if you think about the full plate, it's like a, a full plate with a hole in the middle, but I'm just studying one fourth of it. And I'm I'm interested mainly in the stress at this point here, and the maximum displacement. Um, now the model here uh, is is pretty simple. I have uh, I'm reading the mesh, then I have to modify the mesh to apply the pressure here, to this edge. Then I am creating the the finite element model C plan because it's uh, it's a plane strain model I think. I think C is plain strain. Um, then uh, there is a definition of the material. So I'm using steel material, and this is millimeter unit. So my um, my elastic models is in MPA, and all my value will be in MPA. I'm assigning the material to my model. I have two loads. One is the the symmetry condition, which is called Mecha BC, which is basically blocking this edge and blocking this edge. And the other one is uh, the pressure of minus 100 uh, Newton. And then I have, uh, I'm doing a static mechanical analysis for now, so this is still elastic. I'm adding um, the formulas as stresses and I'm calculating also the forces and um, I'm printing the result to a file. So that, that's all what this simulation is about. So now let's see how to make this uh, nonlinear. So to know what I need to make it nonlinear, let's go back quickly to the PowerPoint that I have uh, before. And let's go to the last section, starting from here, using nonlinear in Codaster. And this basically tells you what you have to set up. So the nonlinear material stuff, I'm gonna set that up after. I'm gonna first uh, first use an el elastic uh, material, but I'm gonna use the, the stat nonlinear. So uh, what I have to define here is the, um, first I have to create those load increments that I, I, were, I was talking about before. So because I already have a static load, I, I'm gonna choose the first method. So instead of creating a, a load inherently, uh, which is uh, nonlinear, I'm gonna use a linear load, but I'm, I'm gonna associate uh, this uh, this kind of ramp function to to it to make it uh, nonlinear and uh, divide it. So let's do that. Let's define this function. So let's go into SoundMaker. Um, function list, define a function. Uh, okay, so what was the name of this? Uh, hop, so ramp. Okay. This. So the parameter name is the, it's actually time. It's not really time, but it's, it's called time. Now you see here it's written inst. That's kind of uh, the 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 real parameter name is inst like instant, right? But here I'm switching to business oriented translation, so that's why I'm seeing uh, int. If you cl click on this button, you'll see time again. So time inst is the same thing. And now I need to assign some coordinates. So click on the coordinates, and this this curve will start from 0, 0 and uh, basically go to 2, 2. You can have a preview of that curve. So that looks like this. 
and click on OK and you basically have it. Now the second thing you need is um, to create this uh, linst function so the time increments for the stat nonlinear um, uh, operator so let's let's create that so define list i think this one right define list in oh sorry real real list so delete this define define list real okay and uh, the name of that is l inst It start at zero. And um, so until one, so it will have a um, number of step or step length, number of steps. So it will have uh, three, I think, three steps. Four, maybe. Oh, so it's four first. Well, you, you can do whatever you want, right? Four until two, it will have three steps. Okay. You can also just define a value here if you want. That's also a way to do it. Okay, and if you look at the text here, okay, there is a small problem here. Uh, this is a number, this is, I didn't define the same way the two, so this will give me some problems. So let's change that. So you see I need to define as number of steps, both number of steps. Oh, okay, I have to enter three again. Okay. So this is done. And now I think the only thing I need is to define the stat nonlinear. So now I have this, uh, which is the this the linear static function. So what I'm going to do is I will temporarily deactivate this. So this becomes red because it cannot find this one anymore. Um, then I'm going to go into this and choose instead stat nonlinear. So I'm going to replace a linear analysis by nonlinear. And um, so here I have to define the loads. So like I said, every every load, the BC and the charge, or well, the load, has to be multiplied by this uh, hop function that I created. And, and then I have to define the time stepping. So this is the L inst list of real that I did. And I think this is all default value I need for now. Um, now let's click on the Carcassion and uh, reuse the input object. So, yeah, so here I, what I have to do is to put the name res non-linear like that and um, okay, I see that I have to redefine what I want to calculate so I'm going to calculate von Mises again so sig elga sig l no sig no so this means sigma equivalent elga l no uh, and no obviously then um, I'm going to add the strains as well the strain calculation is in deform deformation and um, so ideally I'll have to search exactly what each of those is doing I think I'm going to use this epsi elga 
epsilon no and epsilon no. This should give me the, the strain calculated at ghost points, at node elements, and at the nodes. Okay. Now I have the calculation, I have the set output, so results will be saved here. And I think we okay, so I can delete this. I think we're okay to launch this simulation. So now now I have a I have basically a nonlinear simulation, but nothing is really nonlinear in this model because I'm still using uh, elastic uh, material. I haven't changed the material yet. But I can still run it as a nonlinear analysis by increments. So let's do that. Let's try to run this. So, of course, because it has to run several increments, it will take longer to calculate. Okay, and uh, it's green. So it means that it works. So I can check quickly the results. But again, it's uh, nothing to be impressed by right now. Material is linear, so I'm, I'm going to get exactly the same result than previously, except that this will be scaled by uh, my actual uh, loading. So this is my model. And now that we have increments, we can use the button here to, to go to next increments. And you see that now the time frequency is 2, so this is the last time defined in my simulation. So each increment 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, and everything, and uh, it's going up to uh, the last uh, increment. Now what, what is uh, interesting to note is that, for example, if you look at the stress at the last uh, of those increments, you get a value of uh, 740 MPa. And if you have followed my previous, um, my previous uh, videos, you know that the, the kind of theoretical value I'm, um, I want to get from this simulation is 370 um, 78 or something or 80 MPa and and here we're getting the double and and why is that so you can actually can choose some uh, can choose some part of the model and uh, draw a curve to show you I like this uh, this post process they have created so now you see, according to time, your your phone misses is just going up to this value, 740. And why is that? It's because simply we have scaled up the load two times, right? <laughs> That's I I applied a multiplicator to load. Uh, if you if you come back to this um, uh, hop function that I've defined. It's uh, basically 0, 0, 0,022. Two. So we are multi at, at the increment number 2, we are multiplying by 2 the, the result. So I, I've applied a double the value of the previous load that I had applied in my previous simulation. That So everything is fine, everything is uh, correct. Now we, we have successfully done to the, the first step of making the simulation nonlinear. Now let's, uh, let's go over how I can change that to a nonlinear material uh, simulation. Okay, so let's come back to the four point and let's go back to the step telling me how to set up nonlinear materials. Okay, so the first thing to do is to, to have this traction curve file. So you need to know what is the isotropic hardening curve from your, um, you know, your plasticity of your uh, steel material and you have to give it as uh, uh, as a separate file to, to this and um, and then you have to associate that into your material now it, it's a bit um, you know tricky to do this and uh, just reading this you don't really know how to do it because you know what is the 
what is the format of that file it's not written uh, what is uh, you know what are the dimension or anything uh, it's a bit difficult to, to, to see that from here so I'm going to show you a very 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 useful trick that you can reuse whenever you need to know something in Codaster and, and really uh, you can save this trick somewhere um, in, uh, in on a post-it or something. This will be very, very useful for you. Um, so let me show you how I would solve this kind of problem and how I would know how exactly I need to, to, to set up this. So um, let's open a new terminal and let's go into the Salome Maker folder. So Salome... So I think it's uh, Salome Maker. Okay, so I'm in Salome Maker. Now there are a lot of uh, folder, of files, of tools, of text, and everything in this folder. It's very difficult to find whatever you want uh, because you know it's very well hidden. But what you should know is that there are a lot of test cases uh, which are really, really useful and which are providing you with an um, easy way to understand how to set up your simulation so and uh, the way to search for uh, where that that file is is you can use um, uh, what is called a, a recursive grep so grep is a function in Linux which is very useful which uh, can help you to 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 find stuff and uh, kind of filter them out and if you add the R parameter it, it makes it recursive so it means that it can search within files so if you have text files into, into this folder and you use this function uh, and you give it something like so I'm gonna give it exactly this para equal um, para equal epsi and let's see what it gives me back and you see in just in an instant it it'll give me back the location of the aster test cases which are located into this folder and it tells me all the files in which this function is actually used so this is extremely useful and I can basically um, understand how this uh, this function is set up by looking at uh, one of those files so, for example, let's take this one. Let's take this one. Let's copy the path of here. And um, let's open Emacs and uh, you can use any text editor. Let's open this com file. So, Aster has a lot of those test cases which are already all set up for you so it tells you exactly the way this um, this works now let's find where my um, my uh, epsi my par epsi is defined epsi so here so you can see here here um, it's directly defining the the curve uh, using this diffy function no par epsi and give it those, those values uh, so instead of taking the the function from a file like it's uh, written in the, in the PowerPoint here using this lear function read function uh, uh, it defines it using defi function so I can I can do exactly the same thing in um, in Codaster and you'll see that so the value it uses is that 0, 2, power, minus 2, which is kind of the plastic strain. Uh, the, the stress value will be 400, and um, at 0 0.04 it will be 500. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's see how we can use that. Let's come back into Salome. So the way to set that up is to define a function again I'm gonna use epsi um, I'm, I'm gonna call that so what, what was the name used in the PowerPoint f sigma okay f sigma I'm gonna give it some values 
which are so 0 0.002 I think this will be 400 so 400 is the value in MPA of um, and 0 0.004 will be 500 okay so if I look at this curve plot that there is something to note is that we're not sta starting from zero and this is important note uh, if you give your uh, isotropic hardening function to uh, aster you only need to give the the, the plastic uh, hardening part not from zero if if we were to start from zero so I'm just showing you what we would have we would have a curve that looks like this right so that that's the kind of curve you usually see when uh, you talk about um, so it, it's of course it's very simplified curve because it's only three points um, generally it's it's not um, like that it's not that uh, that squared here uh, but anyway it's it's a simplified version um, but we remove this part of the curve So let's remove that. And there is another important stuff to 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 think about is um, my material. Let's have a look. So because we don't give it the elastic part, this elastic part is calculated from the, the, the material properties, right? So my material property is that. Elastic modulus is this. So how do I know um, so what I, I have to do is to make sure that the, the value at the, the 0 0.02 strain of this is the same as the one that I enter because this my curve must be uh, continuous. So I know if there's a calculator there. Calculator, yeah. So basically if I multiply 200 my young model is by 0 0.02 uh, it's 0, 0, 002 right 0, 0, 002 i get 420 so it's not exactly what i have put so i have i am going to go back in my hardening curve here and change that to 2 cuz it must be continuous the curve right okay now that this curve is defined here, I have to associate it in the material properties. So I'm going back to these properties here. And I have to find the traction. Traction. And I have to give it this function. OK. And now. Um, my material is defined so let's go back here so this is good now what i need to define then is in the stat nonlinear i need to give it this relation and uh, the deformation as well so let's open the stat nonlinear let's open the so uh, not this one um i think it's this Comportement should be behavior. Um, on all, and the relation is uh, B miss ISO track. You see, there's a lot of uh, linear relations. V miss ISO track, deformation small. So, you know, you have different types. You have big deformation, G def, log, G, G rot, so big rotation, etc. So now we're using just small, small deformation. And of course, this also depends on the model you're using. Okay. And I think I'm probably good to go for this. So I haven't set up um, 
the number of iteration for the Newton method and everything. I'm going to use a default parameter to start with. And if it doesn't converge, I'm going to change that. So now that I'm going to just go here and start to solve this. Hoping this will work. So I'm starting to see something appearing. Oh, okay. Getting red. So, so there is something wrong somewhere. Let's uh, have a look at the message to see what is going wrong. Type of a Chrome form of what the exclusive form of the paper pursuing this work from the P. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, I think I know. I think I know F sigma. Yeah. Um, if I come back to previous example I have open, you see that I define this value and I forgot to define this prolongation at the right and prolongation at the left. So this is basically I have defined this curve on this very uh, you know limited interval, but I want to make this curve um, linearly on the on the rest of of the interval that that way if the if the strain is going higher than what i've defined in this interval the the, the value will be approximated linearly from uh, what i've provided okay so uh, now that should be working let's try again Okay, and now I'm getting, I'm starting to get something uh, good. So let's um, let's have a look at the results again. Post process. Okay, um, let's play the result. So because I didn't change the interval, let's look at the, for example, the stress. So let's again choose one point here. And look at curve. So we see that uh, this curve is not linear anymore. You know? When uh, we see that when we go over 400, the, the curve start to um, you know, go down and go nonlinear. And that's because we have uh, a nonlinear simulation now with nonlinear material properties. Um, and if we, we were to increase even more so let's let's increase a bit more this um, this function so I'm gonna modify this and add let's say up to three time and multiply the function by three and as I have modified this don't forget to modify also the list of uh, increment which should go up to three right now i'm going to do that in four iterations and oh i don't know why it didn't um, number of steps I think it's a bit strange, even if it by default it's written number of steps, when you validate it and you do not change this, it, it changes to uh, the other type. So be careful about this. Okay, say that. Now let's compute again. And now I'm basically uh, applying more uh, load. So I multiply by three the total load applied and I'm increasing the time increment to from two to three. 
um, just to see a bit more plastic deformation. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, let's see the last increment, and this is the stress, and um, let's select some points here, I know this selection tool doesn't seem to work always like I want. Okay, and now, yeah, the, the stress, um, According to increment is a bit um, so we see at this step here it starts to increase actually so that's a bit weird and I think that's probably because of the um, um, I didn't provide the full um, hard hardening curve so it's probably um, you know extrapolating linearly something like this and then giving me some some weird result here. Um, but you understand how this works, right? So now you are able to calculate this uh, plate with a nonlinear material model. Um, now let's do one more thing is um, I like to show you also how to look at that in Paravis because um, we've been looking at it in the, in the past process of um, Codaster. But sometimes you want a bit more uh, high-end features that you do not have in this simplified uh, post process, so you have to go into Paravis. Um, and Paravis might be as usual or Paraview, you know, it's uh, a bit less intuitive than um, the other one. So I'm going to just show you how quickly you can uh, do the same thing with Paraview. So let's open the results. Okay, so that's my plate and for example the first thing you you do is uh, let's say you want to see the formula stress and look at the increments and when you go to next increment yeah it's uh, well it gives you something so that's that's good um, Now, if you want to see the, the strain, so the strain, for example, you know, the first increment, you don't see much here, right? So what I like to do is to change a bit the color map. Okay, so let's open the color map. So, um, yeah, color map, where is this color map editor? which is here and uh, let's choose for example jet I like to use like 12 colors or something like that in a bit more crispy um, view the mesh now back to my uh, codaster com file um, my Asta study definition of the problem um, the last thing I can show you probably is uh, what is explained at last in the PPT is the advanced kind of control you have to increase the number of iteration or use the elastic uh, matrix. All of this is just uh, are just some parameters of the stat nonlinear function. So just open this and activate the Newton method. And here you have um, all the kind of stuff you can uh, you can control. If you want to add some uh, iteration, activate that and uh, increase the number of those iterations. If you want to calculate the elastic matrix, you can set that up here, um, etc. So that's one of the thing. 
if you want to use Newton or Newton Krila for other types of methods you can you can check that here um, and you have a lot of other uh, stuff also now like I told uh, nonlinear uh, simulation is very difficult now I'm I'm doing that on a simple plate so you know it's very easy you just have load and uh, nonlinear material nothing fancy here but as soon as you want to study a 3d model with contacts and fr and friction and you know complex shapes and all this um, this is when you know the real game starts you you'll have a lot of elements so it will be very slow you will have uh, uh, to choose the right uh, interface you'll have to choose the right number of uh, increments for your load uh, you'll have to um, you know choose uh, the right type of material model and define the correct uh, hardening curve and uh, large displacements uh, and and all of this stuff you know are, are pretty complicated so you you need to have some kind of expertise uh, in this or um, it will be difficult for you to, to do some uh, some real nonlinear simulations uh, but you know nevertheless you know you can read a lot of books and uh, everything is explained how but it just take, takes a lot of time to learn so um, but anyway I hope that you like this tutorial and that this is a real good positive step for you to, to learn this uh, nonlinear world with Codaster and Salome and uh, if you like the video please let me know leave a comment um, tell me what you think or if you have ideas for next videos or stuff you want to see stuff you are doing i'm always interested to to, to see and to know that what uh, my viewers or my uh, readers of the blog are, are doing um, and of course give me give me a like to my video that always um, uh, makes makes me happy to see uh, that people are liking what, what i do because it takes a lot of time to do this so thank you very much and uh, see you in the next uh, videos on the channel.